mermaid. Do you remember me? Pawnee's wealth. What a question. Whom do you remember? Are you asking? After thousands of years of mixing and mingling, remember. Is it worth asking? Or have they forgotten? How many years have you boarded my little boat? Have you forgotten all the frolics we both took in my little boat in the sea, in the endless sea, among the boundless flood waves? Have you forgotten how we stood together for a long time, holding each other's hands, when suddenly black darkness enveloped us on all sides? During the days when terrible storms blew, and mountain-like waves lashed our boat, lifting us one moment to the heavens, the next pressing us down to the underworld, have you forgotten that we both stood as each other's strength and overcame that storm? Once upon a time we were flying and flying in the sky, have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten the stars that you leapt upon and placed on my head as ornaments? Bring the full moon to my face and say, see your golden face on this silver plate. You told me that, have you forgotten that too? Another time you drowned in the deep sea, I stood there in agony. After a while you came out with pearls and corals in both hands and strung them around my neck. Can I forget it even if they forget it? O oh King! At peak times, on the shores of azure lakes, can we forget how many days we spent looking at each other on the grassy mats where the branches of the trees came and bent the decorative bunting without bearing the weight of the bouquets? Can I ever forget how a hundred pairs of quails sat on the tree branches and sang, a thousand and ten thousand beetles circled and crawled, and billions of silkworms flapped their multicolored wings and danced joyfully. How many births can you forget? He looked at me and said, Remember me. You asked, Can you ask that? Remember, sir, well remember. Can you forget all that? Can I ever forget how a hundred pairs of quails sat on the tree branches and sang, a thousand and ten thousand beetles circled and crawled? and billions of silkworms flapped their multicolored wings and danced joyfully. How many births can you forget? He looked at me and said, Remember me. You asked, Can you ask that? Remember, sir, well remember. Can you forget all that? Can I ever forget how a hundred pairs of quails sat on the tree branches and sang, a thousand and ten thousand beetles circled and crawled, and billions of silkworms flapped their multicolored wings and danced joyfully. How many births can you forget? He looked at me and said, Remember me. You asked, Can you ask that? Remember, sir, well remember. May I ask that? Remember, sir, well remember. May I ask that? Remember, sir, well remember. The heart of the evil woman was pounding that she should say all this. But her coral petals say, Remember. They muttered only two words. A.G.A. Say Mathira Kumari, you open your mouth. On the pillars of so many bell-storied halls in this wonderful island of Sri Lanka are statues of beautiful goddesses. Perhaps you are such a statue, I thought. Fortunately, you are speaking with your mouth open. Say a few more words. Let me hear your sweet voice. I wish so much. You told us some things to our commander. You told us that two big ships had come to the Thondaman River and were hiding in a hidden place and they were carrying many warriors. Is that true, Samadra Kumari? Did you see those ships with your own eyes? Asked the prince. Yes, sir, I saw it with my own eyes. Said Punghuali. Aha! I can hear your voice a little now. My ears are pleased. Good, when you saw the trees you left your boat in a narrow channel. You had entered a thick forest and lay in a secret place to wait for the ships to pass. Then some soldiers came down from the ships. You were lying there. They were standing beside the place and talking. You didn't want them to eavesdrop. Their conversation fell into your ears against your will. You had to listen. Is this what you said to our commander? I told it like it happened. Hearing what they were saying, you felt that you should immediately warn the commander about it. You left as soon as the soldiers had passed. You hurried to find the commander's place. How did you get there, Samathira Kumari? 
I came halfway by boat, then I walked the wild way. Where did you intend to go, mother? I came with the intention of going there, thinking that the commander would be in Matoda. On the way, I found out that he was in Mehindale. Enough was enough before I saw the commander. How many people stood in the way to stop me? Saying that, Pungazali looked towards where Sinadipati was standing. A blackout flashed before a summer thunderstorm in her vision. Is it an easy thing to see the general? You will be surprised if my friend who is standing here hears the trouble he went through trying to see the general like you did. It was good that you persisted and told the general despite the obstacles, Punghuali. Will you tell me what you said to the general? You asked from the cover of the tree what the soldiers were talking about. Did they talk? My lord. I dare say that. Be brave and say it for me one more time. They spoke that they had come to take themselves prisoners. Did they say anything about whose orders they came that way? I don't believe it, sir. I thought it must be a trick of the reapers. You can give your opinion later. Just tell them what they were talking about, Samathara Kumari. They said it was the emperor's order. Very well, did they say anything about it? They said. They conspired to crown the kingdom of Sri Lanka together with the Buddhist gurus of this country. I was angry that those sinners who said this should be killed there. You set out to do a good thing. Don't you know that the emperor's messengers should not be hindered in any way? Well, yet do you remember that they said anything important? They told the general that they should not know why they had come, and if he knew he might try to escape them. Therefore they told them to find out where they were and give them orders in person and take them by the hand. So you will set out at once in search of the commander. You have done me a great service. Say Mathira Kumari. Stay a little further away. I have to consult with them about an important matter. But do not run away as before. Do not make Vandiyathevar be sent to fetch you again. Samadra Kumari moved slightly and stood near a pillar. She stood where she could see the prince's face. Two beetles were suffocating in a jar of honey. They managed to reach the shore slowly and then started enjoying the taste of honey. Punghwali's eyes were now in such a comfortable position. They sipped the honey that was the beauty of the prince's face. Her heart was determined that she would not stand bound within her chest. It was yearning to explode out of its chest and burst into the sky. Prince Senadhapati Bhutavakarama looked at Kesari and said, Sir, you are the head of a clan that is close to our family by inheritance. My father's close friend. I have always respected you as equal to my father. You have also praised me as your own son. Therefore, you should help me to do my duty at this time. Don't stand in the way. Said. Before replying, Sinadipati looked back at Parthapendra and said, Sir. I ask you to. You are the close friend of my beloved Tamayanar. I respect and admire the word of my Tamayanar as the word of God. Therefore, I am obliged to respect and appreciate their word too. I pray to you very much. Let nothing stop me from fulfilling my duty. Said. Senadhapati and Parthapendra looked at each other. Through that vision they communicated the fear of one to the other. The commander looked at the prince and said, Prince. I do not understand anything you say. I have spent all my life in the field of war. I cannot know if I speak in a foolish manner. You say that you will do your duty. What then? What duty and in what manner do you intend to do it? He asked. Now my duty is only one thing. It is to carry out my father's order. My father has sent men with the order to bring me prisoner. Why should I be kept in search of them? I will go to their place and surrender myself. That is my duty now. I will not allow the impossible as long as I live in my body. I will prevent it," said Parthapendra. The commander looked at him and said, Don't worry, just wait. Said. Then he said to the prince. But if there is any danger to his life, my life will also be lost at the same moment. It is your responsibility to protect him from any danger. Thus the emperor ordered me. 
Will the emperor who said so last year now order them to be brought in as prisoners? What have you done to command it? How absurd is it to say that they conspired to seize the throne of Sri Lanka? Can anyone believe this joke? Will the emperor who said so last year now order them to be brought in as prisoners? What have you done to command it? How absurd is it to say that they conspired to seize the throne of Sri Lanka? Can anyone believe this joke? Will the emperor who said so last year now order them to be brought in as prisoners? What have you done to command it? How absurd is it to say that they conspired to seize the throne of Sri Lanka? Can anyone believe this joke? The prince, who had been patiently listening to what the great velar of Kajumbalar was saying, now interrupted. Somebody else can't believe it, or what? But I can. Said. What do you mean, prince? Am I telling you that it is true that I conspired to seize the throne of Sri Lanka? Vandiyathevan now came forward and said, What is this sir? Until a while ago you were saying truth and dharma. Now you are telling such a big lie. Sinadipati. You should not believe his word. Last night, the Mahasabhai of the Buddhist gurus offered him the throne and crown of Sri Lanka and he refused. I and this Vaishnava standing here are witnesses to this, he said. Pani Selvar smiled and understood, Vandiyathevara. One question. Will the scheming people scheming with witnesses? Couldn't I have refused the throne and the crown of Sri Lanka just because you two were by my side? Said. Vandiyathevan was shocked. He could not say anything against this. The prince added, Monkey warrior. If you are in doubt, you can ask the Vaishnava standing there. You can find out what the Prime Minister, Aniruthap Brahmaraya, sent to him. Buddhist priests will offer to give you the throne of Sri Lanka. Rebut it with testimony, and inquire whether he sent it or not. Let's find out. Hearing this, everyone there was stunned. The prince looked at the commander and said, Sir. Listen to this. It is true that I had greed in my heart to conquer and rule this Sri Lanka. It was my brother who made me greedy. Brother. You are born to rule the country. You have a conch wheel in your hand. You have no place here. Therefore. Go to Sri Lanka. Seize the throne of Sri Lanka. Iliaprati often said this and made me want to. Therefore, I am guilty, and there is a reason why the emperor has ordered me to be brought as a prisoner. Wait a minute, prince. If such a thought has arisen in their minds, it is the privilege of this island of Sri Lanka. They are not responsible for it, and not their brother-in-law Iliaprati. It is Sundara Chola Emperor who is responsible for it. He himself has told me many times that they should be placed on the throne of Sri Lanka. He told Kundave Devi this. It was the Emperor who first spoke about it. His father had informed them of his father's will. Therefore, they are not guilty. Senior. Then why should I hesitate to go to my father? I will tell him what happened to him. Let these two men here testify for me. Then it is my duty to act according to what the emperor orders. Parthibendra now said in a hot voice, Sinadipati, we are just talking. There is no use in hiding any more. We must tell the truth to the prince. Do you tell me or let me tell you? I tell myself, wait. Said the commander. He looked towards the neighborhood and said, Prince. It is no use trying not to pollute their immaculate souls. They have to tell you about a boring matter. It is known to them that the great gardener is in love with a woman named Nandini in this old praya. She is a witch. She knows terrible magic tricks. With their help she has placed the great destroyer at her feet. He carries on his head the work she has set with her feet. This kind of injustice has befallen that great man born in a tribe and having done many heroic deeds. Sinadipity. Isn't this something I've never heard of? Is it something that the whole country and city are talking about in the Chola country? Said the prince. That sorceress Nandini's power had so far held only the evildoers in check. Prince. Forgive me. Now she has begun to cast her spell on the emperor. 
That is why the emperor has issued such an order, an order to imprison themselves. Senior. Be careful. Do not say anything disrespectful about the emperor. Whatever order my father gives while there is life in his body, on whatever occasion, is the order of the gods. We do not deny it, prince. We fear that not only the emperor's freedom but his life will be in danger. I did not know the whole truth about Nandini myself until yesterday. I only learned it last night through Parthipendra. It is necessary that you also know that terrible thing. Leaving us behind guard outside the hut, their brother Kari Kalar entered. He killed Veera Pandian and brought his head. We also went back happy that our work was done. But little did we know that a little drama was taking place inside that hut. A woman who had sheltered Veera Pandian stopped her and asked for her lover's life. Kari Kalar kicked her away and took out Veera Pandian's head. Prince. Similarly, Nandini was the one who tried to save Veera Pandian, the birth enemy of the Chola clan. It was she who later married a 70-year-old man and came to Tanjavur, becoming the youngest queen of Bavur. For what purpose, she, we can assume that she will come, can't we? She has come to take revenge for Veera Pandian. She has come to completely destroy the Chola clan. It is difficult for anyone who comes close to her to escape from her web of infatuation. Vandiyadeva standing there will bear witness to it. A standing Vaishnava will bear witness to the mob that has taken a terrible vow to destroy the Chola clan. Nandini gives them all the money they need. Prince. Unfortunately, our emperor also finds himself falling into the trap of that villain. It seems that the emperor himself is thinking of making a title for Madhurinthak Deva. Therefore, this is not the time to go to Tanjore thinking that it is the order of the emperor. She has come to completely destroy the Chola clan. It is difficult for anyone who comes close to her to escape from her web of infatuation. Vandiyadeva standing there will bear witness to it. A standing Vaishnava will bear witness to the mob that has taken a terrible vow to destroy the Chola clan. Nandini gives them all the money they need. Prince. Unfortunately, our emperor also finds himself falling into the trap of that villain. It seems that the emperor himself is thinking of making a title for Madhurinthak Deva. Therefore, this is not the time to go to Tanjore thinking that it is the order of the emperor. She has come to completely destroy the Chola clan. It is difficult for anyone who comes close to her to escape from her web of infatuation. Vandiyadeva standing there will bear witness to it. A standing Vaishnava will bear witness to the mob that has taken a terrible vow to destroy the Chola clan. Nandini gives them all the money they need. Prince. Unfortunately, our emperor also finds himself falling into the trap of that villain. It seems that the emperor himself is thinking of making a title for Madhurinthak Deva. Therefore, this is not the time to go to Tanjore thinking that it is the order of the emperor. A standing Vaishnava will bear witness to the mob that has taken a terrible vow to destroy the Chola clan. Nandini gives them all the money they need. Prince. Unfortunately, our emperor also finds himself falling into the trap of that villain. It seems that the emperor himself is thinking of making a title for Madhurinthak Deva. Therefore, this is not the time to go to Tanjore thinking that it is the order of the emperor. A standing Vaishnava will bear witness to the mob that has taken a terrible vow to destroy the Chola clan. Nandini gives them all the money they need. Prince. Unfortunately, our emperor also finds himself falling into the trap of that villain. It seems that the emperor himself is thinking of making a title for Madhurinthak Deva. Therefore, this is not the time to go to Tanjore thinking that it is the order of the emperor. Senior. The news you have given me has astonished me. Yet it confirms my decision. When my father is surrounded by such terrible dangers, I must be near him. What is the government of Sri Lanka to me? Or what is this life? No more thought is needed. To forbid me. No one should try. Said the prince majestically. Then, his eyes fell on Funga Halai, who was leaning on a pillar at a distance watching him unblinkingly. See maiden. Come closer like this. Said. 
Peng Huali came closer. Woman! You have done me a great favor with the message you brought. There is one more favor you have to do me. Will you? He asked. Damn! What is this? Is he asking for help from this poor boat woman? I came seeking the privilege of courting him, he is begging me for help. I came to ask God for a boon, is God stretching out his twisted arms and asking me to beg? Thinking thus, Prince. I am waiting to fulfill your order. Said Pung Huali. Say Madrakumari. You told me that two trees are waiting for me near the mouth of the Thon Daman River, didn't you? I must go there as soon as possible. Will you bring me a guide? Woman! Say can't! A voice roared. Punguzali realized that it was the voice of Sinadipity. All this time she was wandering in some dream world and now she realized her dire situation. The prince now begs her to bring him to the very gate of the danger from which she has rushed with the desire to save him. Woman! Say can't! She now understood the meaning of this command of the general. A thousand voices from all quarters gave her the same command. The trees rang so, the pillars of the hall creaked like that, birds chirped from the top of the tree branches. But a small voice was heard inside the ghost woman's heart. Flower! Here's your luck. If you take a guide to the prince, you can spend two days with him. You can be near him. You can see him when he doesn't see you. The wind that blows on him will blow on you. His voice will often be heard in your ears. Foot girl. A little bit of the unattainable dream that you have come up with will come true. So what if it is? Flower pot. Agree. That soft voice said in her mind's ear. Say Madrakumari. Why are you hesitating? Won't you do this for me? Shall I find my own way? What the prince said caused her heart to harden. Prince. I come to guide. She said. The sound that Sinadipati Bhuthivikrama Kesari cleared his throat at that time resembled the terrible tone that rises from the womb of the earth before an earthquake. He took a step forward and said. On whose name did it fall and hear a shout? Whose voice is that? Let this woman guide you generously. Let our elephant mount up and go ahead. But with them I will come until I see the ships in the Tontaman River. That's my duty. The prince, who was listening to the commander's speech with a smiling face, said, So be it. I will not stand in the way of fulfilling their duty. Said.